We're here with John Dugungi at MIT's Aero Astro Department. And uh, John, could you tell us what we're about to see? Yes, uh, this is a model that we built uh, a number of years ago, maybe about uh, 15, 20 years ago, to uh, demonstrate flutter and other self-excited aeroelastic phenomena here. It's sort of a demonstration of the self-excited uh, oscillations when wind comes into the case. Uh, we have two models that we want to show you. The first is a simple single degree freedom torsional model where there's a single uh, airfoil that is, uh, uh, that is pivoted here and it's pivoted around the mid point. And we're going to run wind through this tunnel here and uh, watch what happens to it as we increase the speed of the wind uh, on this thing here. The model is going to additionally at zero angle of attack, and then later we'll bring it up to about five degrees angle of attack, initial angle, and then uh, a few other angles later on. But let's take it from here. The model is originally at zero angle of attack. Now, to turn on the wind, uh, first let me just show here, if we, uh, we flick the model and back, it uh, damps out. It's, it's pretty springy and has a, a lot of uh, damping, uh, structural damping, some, some, uh, a little bit of structural damping. Now let's run the wind here. We have the wind now going up to about uh, uh, 10 miles an hour, 10 feet per second. This is 15 feet a second. This is indicated on this uh, little meter on here. If we flick it, it takes a little longer now to die out. It dies out, but it takes a little longer at this speed. It looks like it's going to almost catch, but it goes out. Now let's bring it up to about a, a little higher speed. Let's bring it up to about uh, this is about 18 feet a second. In this case, if we give it a flick, we see that a little disturbance will bring it into a large amplitude limit cycle. You can see from that dot on there. It takes a little, if you build a little bit of a, of a disturbance, it doesn't, uh, it sort of dies out. But if you give it a big enough disturbance, it goes into that large amplitude limit cycle. Now, let's, uh, run the speed up a little higher. Let's run it up now to about 20 feet a second. At this, at this point, the model just goes in by itself. The slightest little disturbance will kick it off. I'm holding it. I'm trying to keep it, I'm trying to keep it steady, and then I let my finger go up, and it goes right off into this little limit step. If we go a little higher in speed, you can see that it's now going about plus or minus 90 degrees. If it goes a little higher, it's going more than about plus or minus 120 degrees. You can hear it. It is really quite wild. smaller and smaller, it's now and eventually it goes up. Uh -huh. So that limit cycle shrunk continuously to yes. zero. Okay. So it's up. Now we can try doing this at plus or minus, plus five degrees angle of attack. I'll set it so that initially it is a five degree angle of attack to the wind. And uh, I'll bring up the speed again. Initially, the uh, model rotates around statically because the, the center of pressure is at the quarter at the quarter of the core, whereas it pivoted around the 50% of the core, so it will go up to some slightly new position here. And, but it's still stable here. If we get it up to uh, a speed of about six, six, 17, right about here, 
you see that we get this into a, a low amplitude limit cell. The airfoil is just going in and out of the stall. The stall is around, uh, around uh, 12, 10, 12 degrees. And uh, although it was initially at 5 degrees, the wind has brought it up to right about the stall point of about 10, 11 degrees statically, and now it's going in and out into small amplitude limit cell. However, if I give it a bigger kick, also at this point, it will catch in a larger limit cell. Uh, this is about a plus or minus 70 degrees. If I stop down, it will go into that small one. So this is one of these the cases where there are two limit cycles possible for this uh, this uh, airport. Okay, uh, now uh, we have here, we have another model of an uh, aeroelastic instability. This is more like what a wing would experience. It has a, it, if, you, if you think of a wing and looking at, say, about three quarters of the way out on the wing, the, the wing would be able to bend up and down like that because of the flexibility of the wing. And it also would be able to twist There's a, around an axis. So in a sense, that wing section, which is typical of the whole wing, would be have a bending degree of freedom and a torsional degree of freedom like this, two degrees of freedom. And uh, this would be typical of an um, aircraft wing. The other, what was pivoted around the middle, was more typical of a, say, a turbine body or something like that. But getting back to this, uh, there's a little bit of friction, but you, could, you get an idea that if you, push it like this, it, uh, it bends out. Let's try putting some wind on this now. I'm going, I'm going now about 20 feet a second here, as indicated by this little meter here, and if I give it a if I give it a disturbance, it sort of dies out, but it takes a lot longer to damp out than it did before at zero. It's, it's taking a little longer to die out. Let's increase the speed a little further. We're up about 25 feet a second now. Here we are. Uh, push it down. A little bit of a kick brings it into a, a sort of a limit cycle combining the up and down motion with the torsion motion. Again, let me give it a kick. If I give it a very small kick, I hope it will be like a small kick will we're not doing it. You have to have a big amount. And if I bring it up faster,
a high-performance sailplane of German design having stiff fiberglass-covered wings exhibits classical aileron flutter. The aileron motion couples with wing bending. This flutter was eliminated by increasing the mass balance of the ailerons. 